The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I mean, Casey Case, I mean, Perch. I, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I like how this channel has evolved through the years to do different things. I would like to go back and do the sales analysis. You know what? It, uh, we, we can't wind this channel down until we go through at least two or three more iterations of everything here. So anyway, um, we're going to read this mail. It says the benefits of being a nobody. Okay. There's lots of benefits to being a nobody, by the way. Um, I don't know if 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 you're like me. Um, I fit that, that phase in my life where text messages and email and all that kind of crap is uh, more annoying than anything else. So I'm like, I, I long for... Like the days where there was no cell connection. It was wonderful. Anyway. Uh, it says, howdy, Perch. Long time. It feels like you're screwing with me on Texas. Eh? Long time listener, repeat offender. I mean, caller. Okay. I've noticed comic rookies haven't recognized the huge benefits they have for being a nobody. The first step to realize those, though, is to ignore corporate comics unless the author in question is hell-bent on working on a specific character. If that's the case, here's your creek, your boat, and no paddle. Good luck. But, I said rookie, let's call him Zach. By the way, <laughs> I get mail from time to time like, I you talk about Zach too much. I don't, though. You're talking about like one every 20 videos. It's rare. I don't know. Maybe they all get grouped up because I upload them randomly. Uh, but uh, but okay. Uh, I think I mentioned jibs up a lot more. I don't know what that means. Anyway, let's call him Zach. Wants to be independent. Then I have a few options for him to consider. Do as many roles as you can. If you're an artist, learn to write. Writing is so easy, it's a joke. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, all you writers out there. If you can write and draw, you're 90% of the way there. Uh, that's mostly true. Uh, number to the, the, the mostly there. I, a good writer, I, I'm sorry, I disagree. A great writer, a good to great writer, is actually very hard. Um, we've seen lots of crappy writers. It, 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 a, a average to fair writer is easy. Especially if you're doing corporate comics. Like, Spider-Man fights the rhino. The rhino's big and bulky and smashing stuff up, and Spider-Man's making some jokes, and then he wins. And he's never really in danger in the first place. That's the comic. I mean, you can write a, a crappy, fair story. I mean, you see plenty of them, plenty of them in uh, the various anthologies that get put out. Uh, but if you're a good or a great writer, it's actually hard and rare. There's a gift to it. There's a storytelling kind of bend to it. Um, so I, think, I, don't, I don't think it's easy to be a, a good to great writer. Uh, but I think it's very easy to be a fair to poor writer. I think it's hard to be an artist of you know uh, at all. I think even and uh, and and in fairness, I'll say this out there: a lot of people shit on artists who draw you know screwed up versions of of things in the comics. Uh, but it sometimes is them. It sometimes is digital. It sometimes is the scaling. It sometimes is the inker they do. It sometimes the color is screwed up. There's a lot of ways that can go wrong. And I think it's it's hard to be a fair to poor artist. And I think it's astronomically hard to be a great artist. Uh, so I think that, that's that's how I would classify it. Anyway, number two, I'm back to the meal. Number two, get another job. Do not romanticize the starving artist bullshit. Get that job that will feed you. Agreed completely on that one. Number three, put your comic out for free on every per platform that will take it. If your work is good, your readers will force you to give them away to support you financially. When you have enough collected volume, then look into printing options, whether that's crowdfunding or going through a publisher. Stefan Sajak is a free, oh, sorry, gave himself that I advice some time ago. His Sunstone is a free web comic that fans will always go out and buy in a new volume. If you're good enough to create an emotional connection between your characters and your readers, people want to support you. That's true. Easier said than done. But that is true. If you have the, the financial means to do it, and maybe that's taking advice number two of get another job, then putting stuff out for free for a period of time, as long as you have a very methodical, very thoughtful way to flip it into paid, is not a bad plan. Number four, traumatize your readers. The easiest way to create an emotional connection with your readers. Let me show you a few examples. Ed Ward, Big Brother, or I Sacrifice. Okay, I Sacrifice. Got it. A few of the audience are angry with me for opening old wounds. Good. It means those bits did their job. If you do your job right, your work could have the same impact on people. Um, I, I think that's good advice. I'll flip it a little bit. And it's, it don't, you know, I, I do videos on this all the time. Let your villains be horrific. Let them do traumatizing things. Let them be truly evil and, and stick in the heads of your readers. And then let the heroes overcome that 
Um, it is it is a uh, a trope because it's so you know obvious to pull off and do. But that is absolutely the best way to do it. You know, get in the heads of your readers, give them a villain or a scenario that is absolutely you know beyond the pale, and then have the hero overcome it. And doing that is a very classic model to hook your readers, and they will remember it and they will reward you for it. Uh, number five. When you reach the time of printing, do it in a manga format. Make it as cheap as you possibly can. Give new potential readers as low of an entry barrier as possible. Do it in black and white only if you have to, but make it cheap and accessible. Yeah, I I, I agree with this too, and I think it's not necessarily about um, you know going in cheap. It's also what a lot of people expect and want. Now, um, you could you could do quite well by going in that direction. Just just saying. If any of my fellow rookies uh, want to call me a coward for choosing and promoting this method, that's fair. Coward. But coke and hookers aren't cheap. No, they are not. Um, you know, all the bad artists and writers eat Arby's. That's the, it, the Arby's is cheap. And then your teeth fall. All right. Best case scenario, your work pops off and you can switch to doing it full time. Worst case scenario, you're not bitching on Twitter with hashtag comic broke me tweets while eating cat food. Even if you have five readers, you can focus on the craft of comics while also being able to live a decent life. I'll be very sad when the channel shuts down, and I wish El Percho would keep it, even if that means doing one Comic Pro interview a month, even if it's Sean Gordon Murphy every episode. Yeah, that, that, in fairness, you could do a whole channel off that. He's amazing. Um, all right, cheers, and cheers to you as well. So um, I think that's solid advice. Look, it, it's good advice, and, and I, I think it's, it's about basically giving yourself multiple routes to succeed. That's the trick. Give yourself multiple ways that you can get to the finish line. And if you don't, uh, then you know you're you're now you're playing a, a tougher gambling game. Uh, it's just it's it's better to have options. It's always better to have options. One thing that that also kind of strikes me is you know there's there's these videos that I do and that others do and everything else that really seems to um, point out the flaws, the poverty, the issues of people who work in comics. And I've been thinking about that lately. Why? Why is that? And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that a, a handful of comic creators, again, not, not all, in fact, not even a majority, um, went on you know social media and basically patted themselves on the back, made themselves and more important than others, certainly more important than the readers. I know a lot of people are like, well, the uh, Comic creators called us, you know, bad, you know, bigot people. Um, and, you know, they, they're pissed by that. It gets in your head. But honestly, I think the thing that that pissed off readership more was the arrogance, was the ego, was the I'm better than you. And there are a couple of comic creators who really, really kind of drove that into the ground, really pushed on it. Again, I would say a minority of them, not, not a majority. A uh, smaller group of the comic creators did this, but definitely some did. And, and it's a shame because I think there's a lot of other comic creators who are like, guys, what are you doing? I'm just trying to get paid here. I'm just, I mean, like, fuck, I'm not paid a lot. I just am making this comic book, trying to have a good relationship. So when I go to the con and try and sell some art, people will buy it. And then, you, you know, you over there, you asshole are ruining it for everybody. Cause you're out there, you know, screaming about, you know, having an ego trip because you know, you, you work in comics and they can't, um, the, the gatekeeping that went on around, you know, we're going to keep all the bad people out of comics. Um, I think there's an undertone to that, or there's a, there's a kind of a second layer to it where a lot of the, the gatekeeping felt more like uh, people trying to protect their private little clubhouse so they could be important and others couldn't as opposed to actually doing something morally superior good. It felt more like a, I don't know. It felt more like a, a, a an ego trip. I think that really turned people off. I think it still turns people off. And I think with comics struggling in areas, it makes it so that, you know, people take delight in the Schroedenfraud, if you will, of, you know, of, oh, the comic creator that was saying they're so great and I can't possibly get to do what they do. And, you know, don't, don't I wish, don't I wish that I could do what they do and be inside their business, but I can't because I'm not, I don't belong there. I'm not good enough. And now that same person is having to eat cat food or can't afford dental care or has to do a GoFundMe because they fell down the stairs or lives in a filthy hellhole of a tiny apartment that has roaches climbing all over. I mean, what's funny is there are artists who are genuine, good, solid people and writers, people who work in comics, 
who do live in poverty wages and, and they don't want to. They're not proud of it. They don't like it. And they never attacked the fans. They never insulted anyone. They just, they, this is what they love, comics. And I feel for those people who are just trying to get, you know, some work done and, you know, kind of live this dream, even though they know they're not going to be millionaires living this dream. And I think that I feel sorry for them because, they, you know, they're not living in a, in a nice area. And they're also having to take a bunch of bullshit from, you know, fans who are angry at the handful of people who are act like assholes all the time. I, I, I mean, legit, I, I, I say this like I, I'm not imagining it. I, I have friends. I have people I talk to in comics who are like, they're not even on Twitter. And they're like, what the fuck? Why, why is, uh, you know, why is there so much glee and delight in, you know, you, you get these videos of people are like, ah, these broke ass comic people, fuck those people, fuck them. And, you know, the, the comic career is like, the, the hell? I just want to draw Spider-Man because I always wanted to draw Spider-Man. I don't have a, a you know, I, I'm, I've never said a word about the fans. What the fuck's going on? And I certainly don't want to live in this shitty apartment. And I, I you know, I, I can afford better food than cat food, but not by much. And I, I'm pissed about that. Like, I mean, ramen every night for two weeks, living my dream. And I don't like it, but at least I'm living my dream. And then meanwhile, I got a bunch of assholes that I work with who are attacking uh, people for no apparent goddamn reason. And then the fans are pissed at all of us. What the, what the hell? I feel for those people. You know, every now and then somebody comes in like, purchase an apologist for the comic creators. Well, I am for those people. They didn't do anything. They're just like trying to just do their shit. And instead, they have to, they're, they're putting up with a bunch of crap. I mean, I kind of imagine it's like, God damn it, why are these fans throwing tomatoes at me? And they turn around like, well, what are you, why are you, hey, buddy, why are you giving them the middle finger? What are you doing? You're, you're ruining it for all of us. Anyway, ah, what a crazy world. Anyway, thanks for the advice. Thanks for the note. What advice do you have? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.